Welcome back to CSM 2018. I'm Jason Bellamy and I'm joined by Ann Yuka. And you're doing two sessions, I think, on the issue of concussion, which is obviously an area that has received a lot of attention in the recent years, um, a lot of focus, a lot of expanded roles for physical therapists in recent years. Um, so I look at the concussion issue and I think, in a way, we've made a lot of progress in recent years, right? And in, in just in the public understanding, there's greater understanding that it's not just if you've been knocked out cold. There's greater understanding that even small hits, especially repeated hits, can cause problems when we're talking about sports, for example. And that's all great pro uh, progress. The other progress has been really on the management side. And it was only a few years ago that even though we thought we had a pretty good idea about this, maybe we didn't have the best idea. Um, so one of the sessions you're doing is really about sort of rest after a concussion and how much you should get and our evolving understanding there. So kind of take me of where were we maybe just even five years ago in our understanding, and maybe it's even more recent than that, yeah. and where are we right now? Uh, so Jason, this is a loaded question. Yeah. But uh, so I am doing a session with my colleagues. It is not just me, it's my wonderful colleagues who are doing this session with me, but it's exactly speaking to that issue. There's a lot of misperception out there about uh, how you manage a concussion after it's been diagnosed. We've worked so hard to make sure that we understand how to identify a concussion, which has been fabulous. However, the management side is really falling behind, and we need to make sure that we as therapists are, have a role in this, uh, in the management component, because the uh, the mindset is such that uh, after a concussion, once it's been diagnosed, that you basically rest it, and that's what's going to lead to recovery. But we know that there are certain ways that concussions present, and sometimes active approaches are the best way. And in fact, rest is is count contraindicated. It's going to prolong the problem. So it's actually uh, it's imperative that therapists know how to identify uh, the you know, the, the different ways that concussions present so that you can employ the right types of targeted treatments for those problems. Um, so for example, if, I, if you've had a concussion, Jason, and, and you have migraines presenting after your injury, I'm gonna treat you very differently from an injury where you um, are having a lot of mood or anxiety issues after your concussion. And we have to recognize that it, it behaves very differently in each individual. And so that's where I think our background, our expertise as therapists, really put us in the position to better understand those, those different components. Tailored care is something physical therapists are so great at. And, and what's interesting about listening to this is we've been here before, right? So low back pain is a great example. There was a time somebody's back got hurt and the idea was stop what you're doing, stop what you're doing, get better. That's basically where we were on concussion very recently as kind of the default rule. So how close are we to, to getting, in other words, if a physical therapist right now downloads the, the greatest, latest, greatest guidelines or something on this, are they gonna get mixed messages and how do they know what to do and how to manage that? So absolutely, there, there are, and, and you know, there's emerging literature, but a lot of the, the guidelines are consensus-based. So what that means is it's based on an, a panel of quote-unquote experts, people who, who are in the field and who are working, but there's not enough evidence to really guide the, the, gui or guide the, the recommendations. So these guidelines, these consensus guidelines, and there are several of them. Some are in sport-related injuries, so there's a concussion in sport group. Um, but there's evidence guidelines from um, the like the pediatric folks. There's evidence-based guidelines for from the National Athletic Training Association. So just about every body has some kind of guideline, consensus guideline statement, and they vary a little bit, but. Most of them are still predicated on rest as the main kind of at least initial treatment, followed by maybe if things are protracted in the most aggressive guidelines, maybe you can start activity. What I want to challenge therapists is that while we don't have all the answers yet, is that that is a little counterintuitive to all the things we know about treating 
um, acute neurologic injury, about treating low back pain, as you mentioned, about treating you know, ICU patients, about treating patients postpartum. Every, almost every condition does not benefit from too much rest. And so we do not, we should not allow rest to go beyond an, a, a couple of days after the injury. If we do that and we're not identifying what is still causing the ongoing problems, you know, we've done our patients a disservice. So as this has evolved, I, obviously, clearly there's more research that needs to be done to understand this better. But in recent years, are we getting just naturally better data in? So uh, people probably know, for example, that the NFL has a percussion protocol. You can, we'll debate another day whether that's being helpful or not. Um, but as this has become a, a national issue, are we starting to track things we didn't track before to get a better data set in general? Are we learning things that we didn't know before to where we're starting to have more day-to-day -day real data that we can learn things from? Absolutely, and that, that's why we can start to have a leg to stand on with uh, what we know from the therapeutic com community, not just from other injuries, but actually from concussion itself. So, for example, uh, a couple of recent uh, trials, and these have been with pediatric patients, uh, so that means you know anywhere from 5 to, to 18 or 20, depending on the study, have looked at how rest uh, and, and inactivity affects patients after concussion. And these, there have been a couple of really good studies that have been done in the past two years that have shown that the kids that are prescribed rest or who, do, or who are less active do worse from an outcome perspective. They don't do better, which has kind of been the underlying tenet. Well, if I if I rest somebody, if I provoke, if I if I if I allow them to rest, I'm going to let the brain injury heal. But I think what we're finding is that the brain responds to activity, and it needs to have a certain level of stimulus once you get past a certain point with the injury. So these studies are, are, are absolutely groundbreaking as far as providing a springboard for us as therapists to then have the evidence to begin to intervene, despite the contraindicated evidence, quote unquote, from these consensus guidelines. Do we think at this point that the that the young brain responds differently than the older brain? So uh, it's uh, probably, but we don't know the full extent of that. But what we do know, at least we think we know, is that um, the adolescent brain seems to be the most vulnerable to concussion in, in respect of, of quick recovery. So if you look at populations of patients, um, the very young do very well, and the um, you know adults do well as a whole. As you get into more geriatric populations, they also do worse because they have mo more comorbid issues. But the, so the geriatric um, concussed individuals and the, the adolescents are the, the populations that are most at risk for prolonged recovery. Now, that's not to say that they're not going to recover. That's also an important issue, is that we still expect, if we do the right things, for them to recover. That should be our expectation. However, the timing of that may be more prolonged at the adolescent ages, especially, and in, in, in that, that's a lot from the sports literature, but it, it seems to be the case. And maybe there's something about the, you know, what happens in the adolescent brain, as we know. Right. So this is probably going to be a, a hard question to answer, but I'm going to ask it anyway. As we try to pinpoint what the best care is, recognizing, as you just alluded to, that every person's going to respond differently. And even if you had the, the, even if they meet all the metrics, their response might still be an outlier, right? right? But as we try to pinpoint what that best care is, how many years away are we from maybe getting to more a more universal, concrete understanding, do you think? I mean, are, are we three years away, five years away? This is happening so rapidly we're getting so much more information, or is it just going to really be a uh, watch and learn for a decade? I mean, where, where do you think we are? Uh, I mean, the, the progress has been exponential. If you think about, you know, you know not that long ago, not in my career, we didn't even acknowledge concussion. We, we really didn't even think of it as a true injury. We really didn't manage it. We didn't think twice about it, we didn't take it seriously. So from that point on, and if you look at literature and you look at the number of studies every year that just the, the numbers of, of new research articles that have been published about this injury every year just grows and grows and grows, we know that we're learning more.
but we'll never know everything. We don't know everything about stroke. We don't know everything about Parkinson's. We don't know everything about any injury. We're always going to learn. However, I think that we are closer and closer to having really well-controlled um, uh, clinical research about management at this point. And I think that we're probably within five years of that. You've done one session already, I believe. The other one's still to come. What's the mo in this or something else, what's the most common question you get from that physical therapist audience? What, what do you run into the most? So I, th I think that a lot of therapists out there are, are treating patients with concussion. Uh, I, I think that there was a study done in, uh, I believe it was PT Journal not that long ago, that, that just surveyed therapists about you know, how, you know, how many people are actually seeing these types of folks in their clinics. And it's pretty wide ranging, but you know I, I will fully acknowledge I'm spoiled in the environment that I work in. I'm in a multidisciplinary clinical environment where I have a physician, a neuropsychologist, and colleagues who I work with as a team. My athletic trainers, my you know my my otoneurologist is across the street. I have all of that in one place. But a lot of clinicians are out there trying to manage this as pretty much independent practitioners, and that's a big challenge because it's a brain injury and there are multifaceted components to it. So I think that a lot of the questions that I get are related to that, and how, as a, as a single practitioner, do I have enough um, skills myself, and then how do I have enough um, autonomy and ability to, um, to create effect change and, and to also have a referral network to be able to manage this injury. And should I be managing this injury? And can I be managing this injury? So, and I don't have any easy answers. I think that it depends, but, but I think that the therapist, and, and I love it that they're asking that question because they're realizing that it's complicated. And it is, even though it's the mildest brain injury, it still is brain injury, so it affects all, a lot of different levels of neurologic function as well as um, orthopedic issues and sports issues and uh, fall risk issues and, and so it crosses the gambit of a lot of different areas. So you have to be uh, a generalist and a specialist to do concussion, which is, is challenging for our, our, our PTs. If, if I think about that PT and, and recognizing, as we said earlier, that if they, go to, if they go to the latest, greatest research, it might seem to be conflicting in the first place. Um, if I think about that person and I, and I compare concussion to, say, chronic pain, for example, which is another area where we're seeing that collaborative care seems to be the, the likely gold standard moving forward, that really people are going to get the best outcomes with that. Is it crazy to assume that, that the best thing a physical therapist could do now related to concussion is maybe focus less on the latest, greatest evidence and more about building a collaborative care network? In other words, building people around them that they can work together on this? Is that crazy advice? or? or? No, it's actually great advice. I think you, you have to pay attention to the literature, literature and you have to you have to be current in it and you have to uh, though understand that and recognize that there are limitations to the literature at this point. So you do, I think that building a network is, is terrific advice and in fact the, the talk that I did this morning was with my colleagues Carrie Hoppus who is military and Karen Lambert who is uh, in private practice and uh, we talked about chronic issues following concussion and this post-concussion syndrome, and it very much follows the chronic pain module, so or chronic pain model, I should say. So uh, that collaborative care in that population is probably even more paramount than in any po any concussive population. So, uh, so I couldn't I couldn't agree more. Yes. Concussion management, just one of the issues they're talking about here at CSM 2018 for Ann Muka. I'm Jason Bellamy, and we'll catch you later.